Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into another edition of That's What I Think with Brandon Swanson. I'm your fearless host, Brandon Swanson, and this week, I know it's after the fact, but this week I wanted to take some time and talk about our veterans. Veterans, this past weekend on November 11th, and I just want to say, first of all, thank you. Thank you to all of our veterans for serving our country, protecting our country, and sacrificing for our great country. What you do on a daily basis, what you've done on a daily basis to ensure that our freedoms are protected, that we can do what we want to do, what we like to do here in the United States of America, it's absolutely incredible. And for that, again, I absolutely say thank you from the bottom of my heart, because what you do is something that I would not want to do. I would be scared to do, and you're not. And I appreciate that every single day, not just on Veterans Day, not just on a day when everyone else is going to make a post and put out a post and say thank you for our veterans because they're supposed to do it. We should have a post like that every single day, not because we're supposed to do it, but because we want to do it because we should do it, because we appreciate it every single day. Nearly 21.8 million veterans in our country, in the United States today. Of this 21.8 million, the De U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD for short, nearly 40,000 veterans are homeless on any given night. How sad is that? How absolutely horrendous is that? The fact that anyone is homeless on any given night is awful. Now, some people may say, well, you know what? That's their choice. You know, they, they, you know that I don't think it's anyone's choice to be homeless. For anyone who's homeless, that's not their choice. Many people homeless for mental illness, for other reasons, their family has, you know, had enough. Were, you know, we're not going to deal with them. It's sad. It's sad. But when 40,000 veterans are homeless, that's just wrong. People who served our country, who made the sacrifice, and they come home, and that's what they come home to? No home? What are we doing wrong? We're certainly not doing enough. We're certainly not doing enough for our veterans. Our veterans affairs, absolutely in disarray at times under the Obama administration. And I'm not saying in any way it's because of Barack Obama. It's because many people before were not checking on that. They were not doing any checks and balances. They were letting those people do what they said they were doing and a lot of veterans weren't getting the help that they needed, the help they deserved. For these people, again, who fight, who fought, who've done so much so that we don't have to, that's how they're treated. And again, nearly 40,000 veterans, homeless, homeless on any given night. It's a catastrophe because this should not be happening. We should do a better job. We, collectively, we, and certainly the people who can, need to be a, doing a better job of helping veterans who have PTSD, who are not mentally okay. What are some of the easiest things that we can do when veterans return home? Offer comfort? offer a sense of peace, and just basically ask if they're okay. Are we doing that? Do we have someone there for them? If we don't, we've failed. We failed them, and they didn't fail us. Not at all. So we need to be doing more for our veterans. We absolutely do. There's so many things that we can do. The Wounded Warrior Project, 
There's number one. I know that, I, I believe that it's uh, Mark Wahlberg that is a, a big supporter of the Wounded Warrior Project. I know Gary Sinise as well a supporter. I'm not sure of the Wounded Warrior Project, but certainly of our veterans. We need to be doing more for them. The, uh, the Wounded Warrior Project, just one thing that we can give to, to ensure that our veterans will get the help that they need and that they deserve. Homes for our troops. Homes for our troops, an organization that helps to build homes and bring homes to veterans that don't have one when they come back. And then finally, Operation Homefront, doing some of the same things that Homes for Our Troops does as well. Operation Homefront, helping to give a home, give comfort to our veterans. 3.8 million veterans with a service-connected disability, meaning the service-connected disability, meaning result of a disease or injury incurred or aggravated during military service. Again, these, these vets need help, and they need proper help, and they need to be properly treated, and they need to be treated, instead of people at the Veterans Affairs, VA, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah we took care of that, when they didn't. People at the VA getting these big bonuses when they've done nothing, they only put down that they've done things and that they've reached goals and they've done this and they've done that. And I'm not saying that's still happening now, but I'm saying that it did. And it should have never. It should have never. We need to really, really look at our vets and see what we can do for them. Because unfortunately, even at the point that we're at now, with things like the Wounded Warrior Project, with charities like that to help our vets, to give them money so that they have food, so they have shelter, so they have comfort. I still think that we're under the point that we should be at and the point that we want to be at, quite frankly. Because again, I, I'll say it again, I've said it multiple times already, but they do so much for us. Many of you, I'm sure, know a vet know someone who's fighting currently, could you imagine that that's what happens to them when they come back? Could you imagine that that happens to a wonderful man or woman when they come back after they've put their life on the line every single day not knowing if they're going to come back and then they finally do and they come back to nothing, they come back to no home? Could you imagine that? I couldn't, and I don't want to, but it does happen. It does happen. So I wanted to end today with a, a little story that I had heard from a, a proud veteran who had shared this story uh, at Mass a couple of weeks ago. So we got up there and he was talking about how at Mass, you know, there's these different baskets that they do and put together. and, and it's with cards that they send to the vets, it's with some supplies, it's with all these different things to try and bring them some cheer and stuff during the holiday season, which is amazing and, and I've helped to contribute to because it, I, I truly believe in, in that. He gets up there and he talks about some of the cards that he's gotten back and, and how some of the, the commanders and the, some of the colonels have, have, have written back and said, thank you so much for everything that you've given us. It's really lifted our spirits during this time but one that he got back, it was titled 80 Dads. So this one Army member, I think it was Army, it may have been Marines, but I'm going to go with Army. This one Army member had told his daughter before he left that he would make it back for her high school graduation. Well, unfortunately, he did not. He died on the battlefield. So, it came to her high school graduation and she's getting ready to walk across the stage and in the back of the room, the hall, wherever they were, 80 army men sat quietly in attendance for this fallen soldier's daughter to walk across the stage and graduate. And once she did, 
And once she got that diploma, 80 proud servicemen got up, cheered, whistled, cried. They were there for her because unfortunately her dad couldn't be and was never going to be. But that's a family. That's what they do. That's what they did. And these people who again give so much, who do so much, they need to be treated so well and take of, taken care of to the umpteenth degree. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to go onto a battlefield. But they do. And I'll tell you what, no matter what happens in this country, good, bad, indifferent, every day I'm waking up and saying, I'm a proud American. I am proud of my country. I'm proud of what we do. I'm proud of the men and women who serve to keep us safe. Why wouldn't you be? There's good, there's bad, there's ugly, there's great. But the United States of America is a wonderful place with freedoms that other places, other countries, other nations do not have. I love the United States of America. And I'm a proud American. And that's what I think this week, everybody. Thanks again so much for tuning in. Again, I've said it before. If you have things you'd like me to talk about, comment down below. I want to say again, a thank you so much to our vets and a happy Veterans Day. I know it's belated, but I wanted to talk about that this week. I uh, wasn't able to last week. But again, a huge thank you. And again, thank you to all of you and all of our vets out there that are watching or people that have uh, veterans in their family or their friends that are veterans. I thank them so much and I'm so proud of them for what they do every single day for our country to protect us. Thanks again so much for watching everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Have a wonderful weekend. So long.